Let's talk to Matt Kinniger, Associate Practice Lead, Sub-Saharan Africa with Frontier View. Hello, Matt. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me on the program today. And thank you for joining us again. And uh, how disruptive do you think um, a no-deal Brexit would be for African economies over the coming months? Yeah, so this is the really important question. I think everybody wants to know how will a no-deal Brexit affect uh, Britain's main trading partners. Um, so it's worth remembering that uh, most of the trade agreements between Britain's, uh, between the UK and its big trading partners in Africa, so especially Kenya and South Africa, they have been uh, replicated through continuation agreements. So from a trade barriers perspective, we wouldn't expect a no-deal Brexit to result in a significant introduction of, of new trade barriers. However, um, there would be weaker import demand from the UK, especially in, in the first quarter of 2021. Um, and this is as the economy really reels from the shock of a no-deal no Brexit. And there's also likely to be a weaker pound, which would result in uh, weaker import demand. And there's also uh, most likely to be uh, a greater congestion at the UK's ports, which would mean that getting products into the UK would be more difficult for African exporters. Um, so there probably would be quite um, significant logistical difficulties for companies exporting from Africa to the UK in uh, early 2021. So the fallout would be quite acute, uh, but also probably quite short term. Mm. Now, once the short term effects of a no deal Brexit recede, how will the UK's trade policy and economic performance in the early 2020s affect um, different countries and industries in Africa? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, those are the two sort of uh, crucial questions to be asking. So once the uh, once the immediate effects of Brexit recede, w what will things look like in terms of trading relationships uh, between the UK and uh, the rest of uh, Africa? So in terms of policy, the UK government for sure will want to support um, uh, trade between the UK and uh, Africa, especially Commonwealth countries in the Anglosphere. So it'll probably do this by expanding things like UK export finance uh, and potentially look to reduce trade barriers. But uh, I really don't see the UK reducing trade barriers significantly. So UK, uh, African countries and companies should not expect a reduction in trade barriers or easier market access. And also increasingly over time, uh, the EU will become a more important trade partner than the UK for Africa. So we do expect uh, African countries to uh, pivot more towards the EU in terms of following their standards, for example. In terms of the economic outlook, so um, most uh, of the UK economy will suffer as a result of Brexit, even if there is a deal. Um, and this does mean that we would expect to see lower foreign direct investment from the UK into Africa. Um, and there's also going to be downward pressure on, on tourism, of, for example, from the UK to, to Africa over the next few years. Now, the UK government has controversially decided to cut its overseas aid budget in 2021. How will this affect UK's post-Brexit relations with Africa over the coming years? Yeah, so this is really illustrative of the, the foreign policy challenges that the UK faces, especially with regards to Africa. So the UK government wants to pursue a so-called global Britain uh, approach to, to trading and engaging with African countries. Um, but the reality is that the, the UK government really lacks the physical capacity uh, to uh, push forward this Global agenda, this global Britain agenda. Um, and this generally means that there will be less physical support for um, African governments, uh, less UK support for uh, infrastructure investment and social programs, for example. Um, and this means effectively that the UK will play a diminished role over the next uh, three to five years in terms of aid, investment, uh, and involvement in the development uh, and growth of African economies. Um, so we really do expect the UK to uh, narrow its focus. It's probably going to be really more uh, interested in developing stronger relations with Commonwealth countries, Anglophone countries, can struggle to compete with the European Union in terms of its influence in uh, Francophone markets, for example, uh, in West Africa. Well, Mark, it's always a pleasure to have you on the programme. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks very much.